So, you know, like Sai said, uh, the whole idea that uh, I've been the last two and a half weeks visiting uh, a lot of roasters we work with in Europe, and a couple of roasters we don't work with yet. Um, well, showing them the coffees that we are bringing from the project and also the coffees that have yet to come uh, to Europe. So, uh, that's how we divided part of the table. Uh, but I'm going to like tell you about that specific part after the talk because I don't want to bias anyone with what we have on the table. Um, so what do we do? Uh, there's a bunch of coffees from the table that are actually from my farms. Uh, I've been producing coffee for the last five years, probably six. Um, we've been talking for three. I can't remember why. Yeah, yeah. Probably something to do with roasting. Probably. Uh, yeah, probably something to do with roasting. And because I was, uh, we've been exploring the European market for a while, trying to start working here. Uh, and finally last year we, we, we did it. Uh, but who's we? That's the, that's the question because it's just not my farms. Um, we're this small collective of 62, 63 producers that uh, got together to move coffees without any intervention of any external companies or traders or anything else that had to do with it. Uh, so we do our own quality control, we do our own exporting, importing, financing, and finally sales. So we, we kind of have control of the whole chain. And um, part of it, we were discussing about that today, is not just about the price. Uh, I think especially we should leave the, the price discussion away from the whole conversation. It's a little bit outdated. Uh, it's, it's also about representation, like having this type of conversations, putting the coffee on the table, talking about it, and knowing what uh, well, coffee people likes and what the people work with and the people that works with the people we work with, and so on and so on. Uh, what are their preferences, what they like, what they don't like, what they think of the coffees, why they, what they think about everything we're doing. And we really believe that that constant feedback is what's what makes this industry grow, uh, instead of just like creating these small clusters of knowledge that well, don't, don't get distributed all along the chain. So that's <clears throat> that's what we call ourselves a collective as well. We, the way the project, the project works, it's, um, it's, a, it's a cooperative. It's basically a cooperative economic uh, organization. So uh, we take responsibilities among all of us. Uh, the things that the collective itself itself doesn't do, uh, my company outsources. To the, so we have a company that used to be the roastery. That's why we start talking. Uh, the roastery and the lab uh, from the farms alone. So that's that's I started roasting coffee before even well, doing all the all the coffee growing part at the farms. That was my uncle was doing that. So the company outsourced that to the project. The project can do it, but. Uh, the roles that each producer can have goes beyond uh, just selling the coffee to the product. Uh, there's also, well, you can do your quality control, you can do your own milling, you can do your own bagging, you can do your own sales, and, uh, and you as a producer can even do your own financing. And that will bring you up the scale, so you won't just earn as a producer and as one that is selling the coffee to it, to the project. But also and all these other roles that you can be part of. So I do that, uh, my business partner does that. She's the biggest producer of the project. Of the project. There's a couple of her coffees here. Uh, she's the biggest producer of the project and the biggest financer actually of the project. Um, there's another guy I've been working with for almost nine years. He's also a roaster. He roasts for a local coffee shop and he's the quality director of the farm. His coffees are also here, and he's also part of the like like that same that same idea. And he's taking part of his quality control and some of the other roles. Why think, uh, why why opening this possibility to people is, is is the same as 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 much as many roles. Sorry, in the in the industry, if, if you're only a producer, you'll probably be a producer the rest of your life, and and, and won't have the chance to. To open yourself to, to different ways of doing stuff at the farms, but also uh, different different ways of understanding your own product. 
So if, if you just grow the cherries, deep all them, and like, throw them in a tank and wash them, well, you, you, you'll never learn what changes will they be in your father and your friend quality if you dry the coffee in certain ways. But if you start drying it and start selling it on a platform that gives you feedback, you'll have a better idea. But you'll have an even better idea if you roast your coffees, learn how to roast them, learn how to cut them, and then you're able to tell your final quality. You know, so the whole idea of the project is not just um, being a handful of people and managing another big group of people, which is usually what happens, but, but a lot of people coming together on the roads they want to, and as far as, as they want to, because there's producers that they, they don't want to do it, they just want to sell the coffee and have a good revenue, uh, have a good profit out of it, or revenue out of it, and, uh, and there's also that chance. So um, at the end of the, of the whole operation, we call, we call each export a volume. So each export is a, a determined, a finite project. Uh, at the end of each volume, um, all the profits go back to all the members of the collective. So it's, a, it's technically, my analysts like me calling it that way, but it's technically a non-profit project. So we, we, well, we, basically, we basically give everyone the responsibility of being part of part of the project, not just, once again, as producer, but also as an investor or, or kind of it, like a partner. So everyone will understand that, well, if I screw the collective up with a bad copy, well, we're all going to suffer out of it. So that's part of also giving people like a little bit of the responsibility of having ownership in, in, in a project that will affect their, their supply chain. So uh, the coffees we're copying, um, they come from five different regions in the country. If you're familiar with Colombia, Colombia has probably the biggest diversity of profiles, regions, sub-regions, varietals, processing styles, and coffee ecosystems. We call them like ecotops. That word doesn't translate to English. So let's call it uh, coffee ecosystems uh, in the world. We, we can we can identify 26 just just by terroir and, and, and conditions and uh, we call it uh, environmental um, conditions. Uh, we identify almost 26 different profiles within the country itself. Uh, and then if you add like changes on varietals, processing techniques, growing techniques, and so on and so on, you can have well hundreds of different profiles. So that's been another part of the project since. Since we roast our own coffees, we, we we're starting to figure out a couple of things, and uh, well, we found out. And I always said that in every coffee, and that's that's one exciting thing of the coffee today. It's probably uh, well, I hope it's the most diverse Colombian coffee table you've ever had, <laughs> because well, there's there's a very good representation of what the, what the collective does. So uh, there's as I told you, I'm gonna count it again because. Yeah, there are six different regions uh, with a couple different sub-regions, actually. Uh, there's probably eight or nine different processing styles on the table uh, with different variables. So there's a couple of coffees that come from the same farm, same processing, same everything, but uh, just by a change in weeks or in days of processing, uh, the profile changes from just a little bit to a lot. There's a coffee that's like time totally different, and uh, it's basically just one day difference between the two coffees. Same farm, same everything. Which is that one is that one is pretty interesting. Uh, there's a couple washed coffees that don't taste much like a Colombian classical wash, and uh, there's some varietals as well. So, well, you know, most of Colombia is hybrids. Colombia, Castillo, Tavis, probably. Uh, so yeah, there's also different varietals, but also uh, like what they will call like pure varietals or I don't know, something that's not a hybrid on itself. So, well, I think that's it for the introduction. Awesome. Let's, let's pour some water. And yeah, let's get some water going. <laughs>